What is going on? Diamond Rice here bringing you a brand new video and today we have a video on how to install uh, the drivers from your motherboard manufacturer. Now this guide is more intended for people who have built their own PC and or owns a custom PC but this could work for pre-built as well. Uh, this is for uh, primarily for Windows users. There's not way much you can do about it uh, and so let's get started. Now, when you first install an operating system on a new PC, the first thing you want to do is install some motherboard drivers. Now, could these drivers relate to USB ports, to graphics, could possibly be gra integrated graphics, could be towards uh, mem memories and such, but more of the time, you just want to make sure that all the drivers and other things will be installed and such. Now, for example, on my board, uh, this here, I have the Gigabyte GAZ68AP uh, uh, D3 motherboard. The, this is the revision 2.0 motherboard. So uh, the rate that they do revisions, especially on some motherboards, make sure you're on the correct revision of your motherboard. Because if you use the wrong revision with the wrong support, you might end up breaking your motherboard or might possibly be uh, can't even reinstall or install anything. You might even install the right BIOS and then it will cause even more issues. So this is what it looks like. Uh, if you look under, this is pretty much the overview of the motherboard. Now, if you go to supports and downloads, which is basically where most drivers, BIOS, and manuals you would see for other uh, for other motherboard manufacturers, uh, you go under download type uh, and then choose your OS. Now, for example, I'm doing drivers because BIOS and utility will continue on later, but for first, we're going to go to the drivers. And then, in my case, since I am currently running Windows 7 on this particular PC, I would use it for Windows 7. But as you see, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, and then Windows 10 is obviously supported as well. So pick the, your operating system. It should be 64-bit unless you're currently running 32-bit for some apparent reason, but 64-bit should be the best one for you to install. So under... Under installation, you will see here, I have here audio, chipset, LAN, SATA, USB 3.0, and VGA. Now, these particular ones should be installed in a particular order. The best way to start is to install with the chipset first. So, the ch anything with a chipset would be your first would be your first thing you, you would like to install. And then after that, you would install anything that has the SATA has the SATA or AHEI mode. Now, this particular mode allows you to basically uh, make sure that your motherboard uh, supports AH AHCI and also running the hard drive in that particular mode. Because if you don't have it running in that particular mode, there'll be a, there's another pr uh, previous mode called IDE, which is still very useful. But nowadays, a AHCI has kind of surpassed it. Obviously, RAID's a good one for people who know what to do with RAID, but it's for the for just general purposes, you need to you wanted to install with the ones with the AHCI mode. So that one you would install first. Now the Rapid Storage technology, I don't personally use, but you can find it very useful if you have an Intel uh, solid state drive. Uh, I've heard good things about it, but I don't personally use it as such. So um, after that. So first we have chipset, then the SATA drives, uh, LAN. You want to do your LAN next after that, so you can get connected to the internet and also, uh, oh yeah, make sure you have the Ethernet uh, attached to the drivers and such. Obviously, if you use a wireless driver, you would drive, you would install the drivers for that particular wireless card of yours. So your your results may vary, uh, and not. As for me, I don't really use the real tech. I don't use any like diagnostic utility, anything like that. I would just download the driver itself. I just usually run like a speed test or something if anything's uh, anything of an issue, an issue or whatnot. Now, after LAN, you would want to install your USB drivers. So the USB drivers for a particular for this particular board, since the USB 3.0 drivers are not actually uh, is not actually made by Intel. It's made by a different company. In this case, Etron. Etron makes the uh, drivers for the, for this particular gigabyte motherboard, so you want to install that uh, after the LAN uh, LAN environment has been or the LAN the LAN driver has been installed, and then after that uh, you can do ch you can do the audio. Audio is obviously something very going to be crucial for you for you know try to get some audio going out through your drivers or get anything well get anything speaker like to to be connected to your either like your headphone jack or to your speakers maybe you have like a sub or a receiver that you want to plug into as well now the graphics drivers uh you could install you could install the intel vga drivers from here which you would want to do uh you can get the updated versions in the intel site so if you go to intel uh 
Intel and then for example I have an i3 2100 in mine so mine has the Intel HD 2000 graphics but your results may vary uh, each one of those will have a particular site where it allows you to download particular drivers for it on the Intel website which would be under this download center and then you want to want to go to the one that has Intel HD graphics for obviously Windows 7 8 Windows 8 plus and such like that but for me, as an example, I'll use Windows 7, so I would use I'll click the one with the 64-bit version of Windows 7. Okay, now for that's being installed, what else is installed? Uh, that's pretty much it. That's that's all the drivers that you will, would you want to install. You would so to to recap to put it in order. You want to do it in chipset first, then SATA. You want to do the LAN after that, and then USB drivers. And then for your discretion, put audio first and then do your drivers for the VGA. Uh, VGA either on the actual motherboard website or you can also do it on the Intel's site for drivers as well. Now under download type, uh, the BIOS you shouldn't have to worry about for for drivers and other things because th these particular ones are just meant for the actual BIOS of the computer and for the motherboard itself, especially during boot times. Now, for example, you could do it many different ways, so I'm not going to go into this, but uh, it's very easy to do. It's very easy to do, but it's also very easy to mess up as well, so just be, wear be wary of that. Uh, the manual, you could install it. I mean, if you really do want it and such, I mean, Obviously, you can have the paper version or just use a PDF of it. I mean, it's not really much you can do about it, I guess. Uh, that's my personal opinion on it. Now, utilities, it will depend on the motherboard. The motherboard will be different per each manufacturer as well as the software that's attached to it. Now, some of these are could be really good. Some of them could be really bad. Depends. Like, for example, this LAN optimizer. I mean, anything that has the word optimizing in it would probably mean that something could be interesting. Could be something interesting with it and may or not like could decrease your network uh, bandwidth per particular options and such so personally I wouldn't install that the smart switch I am actually not I have no idea what this actually is so if you don't know what any of these particular softwares are if you don't know if, what it is uh, obviously Google it Google it will probably just tell you a good thing uh, okay so this is where this one's for basically adding a start button back to Windows 8 but no one uses Windows 8 Windows 8 anymore because it's not a, it's not supported uh, Windows 8.1, 10 uh, is obviously the the current generation of Windows operating systems that that are actually supported. Windows 7 is still supported, but it is its end of life, so supports kind of not is not as there as much. On off charge is basically for anyone who has a uh, Apple device, pretty much that allows you to charge your iPhones and such to a better speeds, especially when the motherboard itself is off. So, I uh, I mean you can use it. I, I don't personally use it because I don't use any iPhones, but your results may vary. Uh, the at BIOS is pretty much a BIOS updater, but I always do mine through the actual I do mine through the actual motherboard BIOS, so not through actually uh, any software or whatnot. So Auto Greens just uh, I don't think you actually need this. Auto Greens is more like a just um, generation for like basically putting for more energy output, like uh, pretty much so allows you to basically. Yeah, apparently this this particular version is automatically automatic systems energy savings via Bluetooth, and I have no idea what the hell that means. So I'm not gonna well, I'm not gonna worry about any of that. Express Recovery Two, that sounds interesting. It just sounds like it's just gonna be a way to recover any like drivers or whatnot. And yeah, it just looks like it's a it's just another version of restoring some stuff, backing up some hard drives or anything like that. I don't see it being useful. Obviously, there's better ways to back up and such. Uh, Easy Tune Six looks like it's just more like a kind of like a CPU overclock. Yeah, so it's a C, uh, overclocking utility. So not really much. I mean, you don't really need it unless you want to use the software. Uh, I I personally use like CPU Z, GPU Z, and MSI Afterburner for my overclocking needs. And then obviously I use the BIOS for overclocking the CPU. So that's my personal thing. This three terabyte unlock. I mean. If you have anything, if you actually have a three terabyte hard drive, I think you might want to install these, but I'm not personally sure. And it looks like it's being supported after Windows 8.1. So anything after Win Windows 8.1, you do not need to install it on that one. For my, for me as an example, Windows 7, you do need to install it. So, okay, that's fine. You can do that for that one too. Extreme hard drive. Hmm, I wonder how that means. Hmm. I actually, I'm personally, I'm not actually sure what this does actually, to be completely honest. Accelerating hard drive performance with ease. 
It just make it easy with a user friendly cooking. Okay, so it just basically boosts the hard drive speeds and stuff. I don't see it being a personal personal thing to be useful, so I wouldn't install it. This mode switch, you can go. Obviously, you can go through all of this. I mean, I'm not going through all of it because some of these are actually not some of these are not actually supported, and you don't need to install any of these for the general purposes and such. Obviously, uh, I'm not sure about the virtu this virtual virtual U thing because I, I I've seen it before, but I'm not personally no no one would have bet it. So obviously, you can Google that. Uh, the touch BIOS, I don't need it because I have a UEFI BIOS on, on this particular motherboard, so I don't really need it. Smart six, not really. Dumb, yeah. So basically, all of these like software have been basically installed into the updated uh, BIOS version, or at least the current uh, version of my BIOS. So some of these software I don't actually personally need, and it, like I said before, nothing with a land op anything with a word optimizer in it or something. Yeah, you probably don't need it. Uh, Intel Extreme Utility, another way to overclock your CPUs and such. So that's a good way to do it. But and, but that is it though. There's not really much for drivers and such. All those all the good ideas. But every motherboard a manufacturer ha for its particular motherboard has something different. But they have run the general idea of having uh, support for having drivers, BIOS, manual, and utility. So those are like the like the four main categories that you will see on every particular man motherboard manufacturer. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This video, um, make sure if it did help you out, it's for installing particular motherboard drivers or such. I would uh, hit a like button, hit that like button, and I will see, hit hit the like button. If you don't like it, uh, hit the you know the other button is, and then leave a comment if you want to. I'll see you guys in the next video later.